Pastor Tim, uh, having you to tune into a Brick and Bread at Breakfast. As again, I'm by myself. My wife is all the way in Macomb, Mississippi, uh, visiting with her mother, but I believe that she's with us um, on the Facebook Live. Just say hello to everybody out there. I believe she's writing in the comments right now, speaking to me. Listen, today's teaching is about selling it. You know, there are a lot of people that are saying, you know, should I desire to be blessed? I hear teachings over here about be blessed, and I hear teachings over here. It says, hey, be content with whatever state you're in. So am I supposed to be blessed? Is it wrong for me to desire to be blessed? Or should I just accept the state that I'm in, accept that, and go on about my business? Well, I want to verifiably validate that God wants you to be blessed, and we're going to settle the issue so you don't have to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but you can be for sure that God wants you to be blessed. And so we're just going to settle it today so we can stop going back and forth. You know, you hear this word, and then you, you feel like you want to be blessed, and you believe God, and then you hear this word, and then you want to be humble. I heard Brother Copeland say this here one time and say the, the, the people of the church, including the deacons, was praying to God about the preacher and say, Lord, you keep him humble, and we'll keep him poor. Well, that's not what God desires for his believers and not for his people. God desires to do great things for us, and he desires for you to desire great things. So he said he'll give us the desires of our heart. And so there's nothing wrong with you wanting to be blessed. It's just the motive of why you want to be blessed. And so the idea that James said that a lot of us ask for things and we ask the miss. And why is that of the miss? It's because we desire to heap those things to our own lust. But if you got a, a desire with a purpose, God wants to bless you. And the reason why he wants to bless you is that he may establish his covenant so that the whole families of the world and the earth shall be blessed. And you can't bless anybody if you're not blessed. And so let's settle it now and then we'll get the word to back it up to give us some solid foundations to stand on that God wants you to be blessed. Say, I say this with me. Say, I settle it. I'm supposed to be blessed. And so I will not let anybody move me again. So from this moment forward, you don't have to be moved by every doctrine that you hear from this point saying, you know, uh, you're not supposed to want material things. You're not supposed to desire material things. Listen, also, you need to uh, tune in Wednesday night because we're going to be preaching on the kingdom of God. And I'm going to address that the, the teaching where it says, see what Jesus says, sell all that you have, give to the poor, follow me. So Jesus wants us to be, you know, don't have many things and great things. And we're going to address that and we're going to realize really what Jesus was teaching. And so it's going to really back up what I'm teaching today that God does want you to be blessed. And it's going to solidify some things. And it's going to put the nail in, in right on, in, I don't want to say the coffin because it rises at death, but he's going to just settle it more so uh, Wednesday night when we get the teaching and we understand the revelation of the kingdom of God and what did Jesus mean, really mean when he says, go and sell what you have, when he said that to the rich man and then he says, you know, it'll be easier for an eye to go through the uh, camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. Well, no, he didn't say the, he said the rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So let me clarify that. For the rich man to enter into the kingdom of God, and we're going to teach on that, and we're going to get some revelation and some understanding. So therefore, people won't be using certain scriptures to keep putting you back in bondage and taking away your desire to be blessed. Because I'm here to tell you, there's no need to serve a God that can't provide, that can't heal, that can't deliver, who can't set free. And I'm here to tell you that your God is able and that your God wants to and desires to and your God will do if you just believe in him. So my thing is always lifting up and magnifying God and getting the, encouraging the believer to believe in the God that you serve. So they can be declared that the God that I serve is able to deliver, able to save, able to heal, able to set free. That's the God I serve. And so I want everybody to know my God especially the world. That's the gospel that we preach, the gospel of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that he is all-powerful and almighty, and he can do all things, and with him, all things are possible. Also, want to just let you know that at the end of the, of the broadcast, we're going to be doing communion. So um, if you don't have anything right now, you can, uh, I'm going to give you time to go grab something that symbolizes uh, the bread and the, blood, and the blood of the Lord, and so we're going to have communion together. But let's pray and get in the word and remember, let's settle this once and for all. You're supposed to be blessed and there's nothing wrong with you desiring to be blessed. OK, so don't let anybody push you to the curb or push you down or try to come into you and say, you know, you shouldn't desire these things. You know, Jesus was poor. Don't let that word poor come out of your mouth. J Paul said he became poor that we may be rich. Well, that's spiritual things. Eh, you better go back and read that.
better go back and read that. How many times can you get saved? So if Paul was preaching about salvation, that means you only get saved once. You can't get saved over and over and over again. You know, you just go through and you get, uh, how can I say, you restored. You get, a lot of people think they can just keep getting saved over and over again. You either got saved for real once and that's it. And how you walk in it, in it that's, that's another thing. But just thinking that you can just keep getting saved over and over and over again. No, you need to. You just didn't get saved the first time. If you got to keep doing it over and over again, you didn't get saved them other times. You need to get saved for real, and then go on with the Lord. And notice here that once you come into His kingdom, it is His obligation to take care of you. That's what kings do. All the subjects belong to the king, and when you come into the king's kingdom, it is the king's obligation to take care of all of his subjects because everything belongs to the king. For Paul said, you are bought with a price. You belong to Jesus. And so Jesus knows how to take care of his people and he knows how to do it well. For he said, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and he's well able to make all grace abound toward you so that you have all sufficiency. I said this way with my household. I say a good king knows how to rule his kingdom well and all his subjects are, are happy and loyal. So so know this here. So expand your expectation of believing that God wants you to be blessed and then take the limits off and let the sky or the world be your expectation. So whatever you believe in for, wherever you set your sight, God will meet it and your faith will be released to that part. You can receive it. So let's pray and get in the word and settle it for all, once and for all. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to minister your word to your people, God. I pray, Lord, that you would move through me and that the words that I speak be the words of spirit and life to go forth and edify those, O oh God, to encourage and enlighten and to empower those that are listening today, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Bless the people all over the world, God, that they may know that you are a true and living God and that you do provide, that you do heal, that you do save, that you do set free, and that your arm is strong, God, to deliver, O oh God, and that the words that you speak, they are not liars, O oh God, but they are words that you have set out. And you said that word shall not return unto you, boy, but it shall establish that God perform that which you sent out to do. And we give you praise for it. I thank you and I magnify you for what you're about to do. For many shall be set free, God, in their spirits, in their hearts, in their minds. And there, God, the limit's going to be taken off, God, and the expectation is going to rise and soar like the eagle, O oh God, to believe you for great and mighty things, God. I pray, Lord, that everyone's faith be increased. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to walk you through some scriptures today because get it in your heart to know that God said he would give you the desires of your heart. We have to listen to the word and find out what we believe. Now, there are things that God deal with a believer. We need to settle that right now. There, is, there are things that we do that causes the curse to enter in, to cause us to reap destruction, uh, where God brings forth the chastening. Now, per se, it is not God physically doing the chastening. It's his word doing the chastening, for he's already set his word in motion. Blessings and curses. Those things have already been decreed. Those things have already been established. Where you fall under is what you get. So if you're walking in the precepts and the laws of the blessing, the blessings and all the results of the blessings will fall upon you, pour out upon you, overtake you. But if you walk under the ram of the cursings, doing those things that are disobedient, then guess what? All the results of the curses are going to fall upon you. These things have already been set in motion by God. He does not have to do anything. Else. It does not him coming in physically doing anything. The blessing maketh rich and add no sorrow with it. The blessing is working. God doesn't have to do anything. It's just like the sun and the moon and this whole universe is working. God's not sitting there with the physically moving things around. He set his word into motion and his word is performing these things. We understand that this earth and this world was created by the words of God. So when God sent out his word, it is still working. Say the word is working. The word is working. It's working for you or against you. But it depends on where you are, where you are positioned concerning the word is what's going to happen to you. So if you're positioned Walking up right before God, the blessing will say, no good thing would he'll withhold from you. He'll make his in, your enemies his foot, your footstool. That's because you're walking under the precepts and the commandments and the laws of the blessing. But if you go over here under the curse, you are getting in sin, you, 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 you're walking in strife, jealousy, and bitterness, then everything that comes for that, from that is going to follow you, overtake you. So what we do is once we come into the kingdom, these laws exist. It depends on how you walk in, how, well, like I said, where you position yourself, where, what will come to you, what will manifest in your life. So know this here. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So what I want to do is I want to establish 
the, the word that we stand on to settle it. Let's look at Ephesians, um, the fourth chapter. We're going to start with the 10th verse, and we're going to read down to 14. Ephesians 4, 10 through 14. And this is what the word says. He that, as, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Listen to this. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Watch. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature and the fullness of Christ. He's trying to conform. We, we're, we're working together. All the men, the administration of the, of, the, of the callings of God, the administration that God has established is for the perfecting of the saints to bring us into the very fullness of the image of Christ. Watch this here. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive us. So we got to make up our mind that whatever the word says, that we don't be going, okay, I believe I'm supposed to be blessed. Now we're dealing specifically with just being blessed. I'm supposed to be blessed. I'm not supposed to be blessed. I'm supposed to be blessed. I believe God for a big house, a nice car, money in the bank, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this just the idea of what are you doing? Now, when God dealt with the rich man that talks about him faring sumptuously and that he wanted to build bigger barns and all those things, and that guess what? He was trying to heap those things to himself. And God said, thou fool, thou soul is required of thee this day. And when you die, who shall those things be? But a man that would be blessed so that he can be a blessing. That is a total different thing, and we'll explain that more when we talk about the kingdom of God Wednesday night. But I just want you to focus on this here. It does not make any sense for you to come into the kingdom of God, serve a God, and that you still be just as raggedy as you were when you were in the world, just as discouraged, discouraged as you was in the world, depressed as you was in the world, broke as you was in the world. The devil is a lie, and we're not going to believe that, for that's not God's way, and it's not God's will for your life. Just get the just settle that. Just say, just say, I'm supposed to be blessed. Get that in your mind and in your heart. I'm supposed to be blessed. I'm supposed to win every time. Anything concerning me, whatever I put my hands to, it's supposed to prosper. Everything is supposed to be good concerning me. Amen. Everything's supposed to be good concerning me. Now, let's look at um, James, the first chapter. So we want to get some things that's going to back up us believing that God wants us to be blessed. And, you know, I don't understand people that try to, you know, feel that if you watch this, we got to kill this sacred cow. We got to kill this, this mentality that if you're blessed, there's sin in your life. And, and, and I, I don't know where they come from. The people look at you and say, wow, he's blessed. Uh, the devil gave him that. The devil ain't giving anything. The devil is not giving anything. He is not. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I can that you may have life in that more abundantly. Okay, so let's look at what James says in 1 and 5. You know what? Since we talked about every good and perfect gift, let's jump over to James 1 17. And let's get that since, since the Spirit of God brought that out. Listen to what he says in James 1 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, let me explain that to you. He says, everything that you see that is good, everything that you see that is perfect, comes from the Father above, and there is no variableness of turning with him. In other words, that whenever he gives you those things, he doesn't repent. Now, you may do a lot of things that cause you to walk with those, where the enemy comes and steal those things from you because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And so, like I said, when you fall up under that precepts and the laws and your actions and your motives fall up under the curse, then the enemy has the right to come in and cur the curses will do automatically what the curse is supposed to do, destroy you, steal from you, rob from you, even kill you because you're operating under the curse. But now, if you stay up under the precepts and the laws, and walking up right before God so that the blessing will operate. Oh, the, the, those things can't touch you. The curses have no right to you. So the idea is knowing this here. All the good things come from on the blessing side. All the evil things come from on the curses side. And so all these good things, good and perfect gifts, 
come from God, and he doesn't change his mind when he blesses you. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't feel sorry when he blesses you. If you start walking contrary to the word, it's not God that's taking it. It's the enemy saying, oh, now you're in my territory. Now I have a right to what you have, uh, uh, like we used to play when we were children. Left hand, give it up. I saw it in, see, see, you got the right hand and you got the left hand. If you got, see, they couldn't touch you when we were playing the game. They couldn't touch anything in your right hand. They just had to sit there and watch you. But as soon as you put it in the left hand, left hand, give it up. So as soon as you get out of the right hand of God and move over to the left hand of God, guess what? You got to give it up. And a lot of people are giving up their lives, giving up their savings, giving up their marriages, giving up their children, giving up their health. Why? Because we won't walk in the right hand of God. So the idea is stay on the right side. Stay on the right side. Look at your neighbor say, stay on the right side. So you can walk under the blessings and not under the showers and the heavens of the curses. So every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above, and he doesn't repent when he blesses you. Even the Bible says the gifts and callings are without repentance. And so God does not change his mind. The Bible says we are under better covenant, new and better covenant. So it's not like it was in the Old Testament when you got on God's nerve and he dealt with you. Now he goes through Jesus. In other words, he said, Jesus, what's going on with him? And Jesus is a propitiation for me and a mediator for me. And he says, well, let me deal with him first. Jesus comes and hey, he sends the Holy Spirit, deals with me, convicts me, reprove me, correct me, instruct me. And then when I get it together, Jesus go back to the Father and say, okay, check him out now. So the idea is we, I thank God for a go-between, a mediator between us and the Father that God doesn't have to deal directly with us, but that he goes straight to Jesus, see the blood on the mercy seat, and we find grace in the time of trouble, help in the time of trouble, and we have, can find what we need in the time of trouble. And so I thank God for our Savior who there is in the between and being an a intercessor for us. You ought to thank God for that. And so... God doesn't repent when he wants to bless us and do us good. Now, as far as concerning uh, wavering, Paul says, now remember in Ephesians, that we're not to be tossed to and fro. We can't listen to See, that's why you, you, you have to really know how to rightly divide the word and have a spiritual ear because there's a lot of doctrines going out there in the world, a lot of doctrines. And I'm, listen to me. Don't believe everything you hear. I don't care how persuasive a preacher is. I don't care how persuasive Our job is not to be persuasive. Our job is to teach the truth. And your job is to believe the truth. Not who can, we're not in a court case where which, whichever attorney can be more persuasive and uh, as, as if they were presenting a case to a jury who can sway the jury more so, so to going, passing the verdict toward their uh, uh, um, winnings. No, no. The, the Bible is you speak the truth, you believe the truth, but you have to have an ear to hear. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. So when you 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 guys got to hear God say something, and I hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. My sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. So you need to make sure that you're his sheep, you have his ear, so that you hear his voice, and then a stranger won't follow. And something will go off, and you say, ah, mm, 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 that's not right. That's not right. Think about it. When you were listening to that poverty message, something went off in you that just didn't feel right. You say, well, I'm not supposed to want anything. You know, I'm just supposed to bear this sickness because it's God trying to teach me something. God's trying to teach me humility. And something just didn't set right in your spirit while you were sitting up there agreeing with that. No, because that's not, God, that's not God's word. God's word is, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. And so uh, most preachers are afraid that if we teach people about prosperity that, oh, uh, you're not... You're not exercising or ministering the weighty matter of the law. Them jokers in sin, you need to get them out. Well, listen, folk going to sin regardless of whether you teach them or not. And I won't tell you the truth. The, you, can, you can test it if you want to. The church that always preaches on sin 24-7, the church is rampant with it. You want to know why? Because you're not teaching life. You're not see all you teach. Sin is death. The wages of sin is death. All you're doing is teaching death. What you have to do is you have to teach life. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If all you're doing is teaching sin, you are causing them to be sin conscious. 
sin's conscience. So that's all they know to do because that's all you're telling them. If all you're telling about is fornicating and adultery, guess what? You're going to have a lot of fornication and adultery in the church, a lot of teenage pregnancies because that's all you're talking about. But if you start talking about the life of God and giving them something to aspire to, something to cause their faith to rise to that level, you're giving them something to shoot for, you give them something to set their sights on, guess what? They're going to say, you know what? I'm tired of fornicating. I'm tired of committing adultery. I'm tired of walking up under curses. I'm ready to walk in the blessings and the way I'm going to get the blessings is to walk where this man is teaching me. So I want to learn how to live, not die. It's just like going by and seeing somebody's town. But man, your tie's on flat. 50 people go by and say, your tie's on flat. That doesn't help the man. But somebody finally comes back and say, man, I got a uh, jack and a spare tie. Can I help you? And so when he see the jack and the spare tie, guess what? He going to fix his flat. So when you tell people about the life of God, the kingdom of God, they're going to fix the mess that they're in because you're going to give them something to look forward to, give them something to aspire to, give them something to believe in, give them something to act up on. And guess what? When they act up on those things, they're going to walk out. And I'm telling you, their life will change. The idea is you got to give people somewhere to go because if all you're doing is preaching where they're at, they're going to stay there and even get worse and some will die there. But if you keep telling them, there's a land over there flowing with milk and honey. Them that want to go, them that believe shall go. But them that don't will stay there. But if all you're doing is talking about Egypt and everybody staying in Egypt, we all going to die. But whosoever will wants to go over to the promised land where it's flowing with milk and honey. And so I bring you the gospel so that I can teach you how to live. And so guess what? I despise sin just as much as God. I deal with sin, but we can't stay there. We got to go somewhere else. We got to learn how to live. And so you notice that Jesus, they said, well, Jesus preached about sin. Yes, he did. But that wasn't all he preached about. He preached about the kingdom more so. And so when you preach people into the kingdom, guess what? They come out of sin. Preach, preach them into the kingdom. They come out of sin. And the Holy Ghost gives them power to fight it. You got to give them some power. So I'm giving you some power today so we can settle some things. And so guess what? If you kill the, the idea that you're not supposed to be blessed, guess what? You'll, you'll stay in sin. I'm going to tell you, people need to, people be, you know, a lot of people sin as a way of escape and release. I can't get nothing else. I might as well have a little fun. No, I come to give you life. And if you believe it, you can have it. But the idea is you're going to have to sell it because Let's read what James says so we can get to it. And look at James. He says this in the first chapter, the five, five through eight. And let's, let me read this here. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. He's not holding back anything. He give it to all men that liberally that will ask him. And upbraid it not. And it shall be given him. It's not a, a question whether he will do it. It shall be given him. But let him. Listen to this now. But let him. Ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. There it is, going back and forth. So I believe I'm supposed to be blessed. Well, I don't need nothing, just for me and my family. Oh, I'm supposed to be blessed. You go over here to this message and you hear. You jump in and shout because it feel good because the message is right. The message is true. But then you go ahead and the preacher get down on you and you just a dirty, rotten, low down sinner that wants to have, want God to bless you. Why you want to be blessed and why you want all that stuff? God just wants you to have a spiritual blessing. And that same rascal is driving a nice car, living in a nice house, and going to demand all y'all give him a nice offering. There comes a time when we as believers have to stop letting people insult our intelligence. My thing is, you try every spirit by the spirit, even me. Don't listen to everything I have to say. Go back and prove this word yourself. You hear something I say, you just say, mm, that don't quite sit well with me. I'm going to check that out myself. Don't be like, ah, oh, I wonder is that true. If you have to wonder if it's true, you go back and study the word. I am giving you free access. We're not like the Roman Catholic Church will say, hey, this is what you're going to live, and this is what you're going to read, and this is what it's going to be. No. You got your own Bible. I'm saying you hear this and something don't set well with your spirit. You go in and you get in the book and you figure out what it is and you study it and you study it and you ask the Holy Ghost to reveal it to you until you get a release in your spirit that what I'm saying is true. And you got you can say an amen or you can say or you can send me a comment or email or whatever you want to do. inbox me and say, uh, Reverend, uh, I don't know about when you said this and said that. Can we discuss this and we can discuss it? And you know what? I am not one that is so arrogant and proud and puffed up. I want to learn because you know what? 
I'm going to see his face one day, and I want to hear him say, well done. And I'm not about to let any pride or any foolishness or any ego get in the way of me entering in when he says, it's time for you to come in. No, no, no. I am always open because the Bible says we all know in part. And so there are some things that the Holy Spirit might show you and reveal to you, and you can reveal to me, and we'll reveal it to the body of Christ all over this world. So James is saying, you can't be tossed to and fro uh, with the wind, with your wavering as far as uh, faith is concerned. For let, now watch this, this is true, and, and you can see it in your life if you, if you go back and look at your life. He says, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. All of his ways. If you can't make up your mind whether you want to do this or do that, guess what? You're going to lose every time because this person is going to pull you over here. And whatever you invest in that, you're going to lose it because when you go over here, you lost that investment. You stand over here. Well, I'm going to do this here. And then you say, uh, uh, you think about it, jobs. You, you want, okay, well, I'm going to invest in the internet business. And then you go in and put all your money in the business. Well, no, nah, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to start my lawn care business. No, you can't do that because if you every time you move and change, you lose investments. And that's the same way it is with, with God. Well, I, I believe I'm supposed to be blessed. And then you start believing God, writing down the things that you want God to bless you with. And you start confessing the word, decreeing the thing, believing you receive. When you stand praying, you set your petition before God saying, Lord, I know that you always hear me. And this is the confidence that I have, that if you hear me, I have the, 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 the petitions that I desire of thee. And then you come over here and say, or somebody say, well, why are you on all those things? And, you know, God is not requiring those things. And he's looking for the meek and the humble and the lowly of heart. Yes, he is. But I'm telling you what, he's not trying to withhold any blessings from those as well. And you've got to see us on Wednesday night to understand what the kingdom of God really is and how the, the Lord concern, considers the, the revelation and the teaching on the, to the poor. The Bible said that's one of the gospels that we have to preach concerning the kingdom. The gospel is preached to the poor. For what? Telling them to stay poor? No. Telling them how to in, how to get out of the poor, poorness. Well, he said the poor will always be with us. That's in context if we look at it. But everyone should be evolving and working their way out and pulling those others up. Now, there will be some that will be poor because they are lazy. And I'm not saying that to be negative. They just, they just don't want to do anything. They want to always depend on other people, always accept, expect a handout. And you know what? We're going to help them. You know, if it's needful, not wasteful. Needful, not wasteful. Because Jesus said, don't cast your bread to the dogs, nor your pearls to the swine. So we're blessing those that need, not those that are wasting. So if you're going out gambling and drinking and partying and you're wasting your light bill money, you don't come to me talking about, hey, I need my light bill money. You done lost the enemy robbed from you, and I'm not going to let him rob from me. But if it's there and you don't, you know, you, you, you barely got a nice house, barely got a ride, and you got too many children that you're trying to feed and you just, you just need some help, you need some help, help is on the way. But, you know, you playing, playing games and hoping that you're going to fall back on somebody, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So the idea is should I be blessed, desire to be blessed so that God can bless you. And James said, make up your mind. Either you're going to believe by faith or not. Now, it doesn't take any faith to be poor. It doesn't take any faith to not want anything. It takes faith to achieve some things. Now, when we look at uh, Hebrews 11 chapter, as Paul talks about all those men and women of faith, that faith was to obtain something. Not talking about going to heaven. It was to obtain. So everyone, he gave different examples of what people achieved with their faith. The dead being raised, shedding the mouths of lions you know, over con conquering kingdoms, those things, operating by faith. So the idea is you release your faith to receive something, but there has to be a desire. Now faith is the substance of things, things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So there has to be, you, you, how, many, you, you, how many salvations is it? It's just one salvation. So we can't be talking about salvation. We got to understand the gospel of the kingdom. We got to, because if we don't, believers are going to continue to be hoodwinked by the enemy. And we got people, you know, that are teaching. Well, we got to get down in this word and figure out how to rightly divide it to be a block blessing to the body of Christ so that we can mature people up into the full measure and the stature of God. Instead of you going around believing God should heal you, 
not believing that God should hear you because God is trying to teach you something. And then you say, well, I just believe that God is going to hear me. I believe by his stripes I'm here. And then, sister, you know, just God, just bear it. And God's going to, you know, just, just going to cause you to endure it and go through it. No, 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 no. You're going to have to make up your mind. I'm supposed to be healed. And don't let the enemy try to mold you into accepting something God never meant you to, ex to accept. Do you, is, is it God's will for you to be healed? Emphatically, yes. Does God want you to prosper? Emphatically, yes. You are supposed to prosper. And now, watch this. Well, I'm not prospering, so you make me feel condemned. No. You get this word, and you come out of that hole, and you start believing God, come high water, and you walk yourself out of it, you talk yourself out of it, and you raise your level of, your level of expectation. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stop listening to garbage that tend to poverty, and start listening to the words that tend to life, and you will live and not die. But you can, you can only live as much as you have the word of God in you. Your faith will only rise to a level. When I was talking, thinking about faith, now I want you to listen to this here. There is a sight that you set. Once you set that sight, your expectation rises to that level. And then once your expectation rises to that level, therefore now faith comes to up to that point. It's sort of like looking in through a, 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 a scope on a gun. You, you, you aim for something and then you're looking through the sight. And once you set your sight on that, your expectation is to conquer that which you're looking at. And then when you pull the trigger, that's your faith being released to achieve that. All those three things working as one. So if you can see it in the spirit, your expectation will come to that level. Then your faith will rise to that level and all the three will come together. Now you believe you receive. It's already done. So the idea is, can you see it? And that's the problem. People can't see themselves blessed. If you can see yourself blessed, if you can see yourself prospering, if you can see yourself healed, if you can see the money in the bank, if you can see the job, if you can see the husband, I'm telling you, you will raise your expectation to that level of your sight that you see in the spirit. And now your faith has something to latch on to because where, expe where expectation is, there will be hope. Where there is expectation, there will be hope. And so you are expecting. What expecting mean? Expecting is saying, I believe I receive. And there is no other choice. So when you, when, now this is how we should take it. When you believe you receive something, you go about your business. You don't sit there and worry about it and say, well, I hope God do. If you're still worried about it and wonder if it's going to happen, no, no, you're not expecting, you're not hoping, you're not, you're not believing. You're wishing. And there's a big difference between wishing and believing. If you believe something, you never give it a second thought. You're going about your business as far as you're concerned. It's already done. Watch this. I'll give you an example. You go and apply for a job. They call you for an interview. You go in an interview. Now, in the natural, we're talking about it in the natural. You go in there and you say, man, how did I do in the interview? And it seemed like everything went well. So there's a little level of believing and hoping and an assurance that you have the job. Now, you wait two weeks later, all of a sudden you get an email and say, hey, we'd like to make you an offer. That offer is something that you want to receive because you like what you see. Now, once you sign the papers of the offer and send it to the employee, employer, you don't, you're not going to work for another two weeks. Another two weeks. Are you worrying about getting the job? No, you got the job. Why? Because I've already signed my offer letter. So as far as I'm concerned, I already have it. Have you started a job yet? No. Have you walked on the premises yet? No. No. So it's the same way with faith and expectation so that when we believe God for something, I don't have to worry about do I have it. I've already settled it. So let's settle it today that God wants you to be blessed. And when you believe for his blessings to be upon you, walk in the way of the blessings and it will fall on you and then God will make sure it come to pass. Jesus said, and it shall come to pass. When you stand praying, believe, you receive, and it shall come to pass. So now, we're not going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by every teaching. You know, should I be poor and humble? And should I uh, um, be blessed? Well, you know, people make vow of poverty. 
that they can make a vow of poverty. That's the decision they made. God did not declare that. If they make a vow of poverty and they give everything they have over to the poor and everything, or give it away, that's, that's they can do that. And but God is not going to re reprimand or criticize or harm anyone that says I'm not willing to go that far. You know, I, I look at people that always comes against the church, especially those that prosper, and then they come against them so hard. And I do want to say, success, provision, prosperity is relative because the same one sitting there criticizing somebody, somebody can say, hey, you living in a mansion, you driving a nice car, it may not be a Rolls Royce, but you driving in a nice car, I don't think you need that. I'm riding a bicycle. I don't think you need a car. So it's relative. Everybody got something to say concerning your prosperity. And this is how you look at it. And I know you to listen to this, and I want you to be set free, and I want you to keep your mouth shut concerning people because if God want to bless them, he, he can bless you. And I would hate for you to set your own self up to be limited because God wants to bless you, but you can't, you can't get blessed now because you done spoke against somebody else. I want you, I want you to listen to this here. If God was to make everybody in this world, 50 billion people, billionaires, can he do it? There's no doubt in our mind he could do it. If he wanted to do it and he did it, what would that be to us? Now, let me share something with you. Here's what we all need to keep our big mouth shut. If God desires to bless someone, and let's say he touches. Now, this is the gospel. We need to listen to this here. He touches a hundred people to give you a thousand dollars because you 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 did you set yourself up in a position to believe God for something. Everybody look at you and say, "Well, how'd you get all that money?" Say, so, "Hey, the Bible says giving shall be given unto you, good measures pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall be given to your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, it shall be measured to you again." Well, I just don't think that's right that people give you. What is it our business? I'll give you a case in point. There are a lot of things that the men of God on television do. I wouldn't do it. That's me personally because I don't have the need to do it. Everybody getting on Jesse Duplantis about his $54 million airplane. Would I do that? No, I don't have a need for the airplane. I, and I'm not going to say anything against it because I don't know if I ever need that. But look at it this way. This man is exposed to millions of people and if a million people gave him $54 he has the airplane 1 million people $54 that's $54 million who's hurting nobody did he put a gun to the people's head no so why is it our business if those people desire to bless that man what is it of our business we should keep our big mouth shut because that's what God do. And because if we think like that, we put ourselves under the curse because we're speaking to, speaking concerning things that doesn't matter. Well, he could have did so and so and so with that $54 million. Probably could have. But we don't know what he's doing with his other money. So I don't know that. So I just keep my mouth shut. And I say, well, hey, if, if, if a million people gave the man $54 and they blessed him with the airplane, hey, that's how the blessing works. It's on his life. And so I, if the folks ain't mad to give him, like it was our own Ivy Healy about his Rolls Royce. And he just flat out told me, say, hey, my people, didn't, my people loved me and they gave me that. What can we say? Shut your mouth. Cause people to love you so they can give you something. The Bible is fulfilling itself. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together. We shouldn't be saying anything. I don't say nothing about the preachers. They got 30,000 members and got mansions and the people, they're giving it to them. They're not putting a gun in anybody's head. And if those people love them enough to give to them, they are operating in the scriptures. And the, the same people that are criticizing probably don't do half of what those people do. Don't do half of what they do. They still be, building bigger, bigger barns themselves, really ripping folks off. And so the idea is we should just sit back and say, Lord, the gospel is being fulfilled. Them, they give to those people. That's how the book say it. Say, watch this now. Given it shall be given to you, good measures pressed down, shaking together, running over, show men, not one. So you think about it, folks start giving in your bosom, are you going to feel guilty because folks bless you? And they be like, you shouldn't be living in that kind of house. You shouldn't be driving that kind of car. The devil is a lie. 
I didn't rob, steal, or kill anybody to get it. I did what the word say do. I'm a giver. I'm a blesser. And guess what? It comes back to me, good measures, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. I'm going to let the word do the work in my life. I'm going to let the word do the work in my life. And so if that's, if you don't need that, just be quiet. So just like me, I don't need a 40,000 square foot mansion, but I'm not going to sit there and criticize somebody that's got one. I don't need it. I don't want it, but it, it's not my privilege or my prerogative to open my big mouth and say anything against it. Now, I could see if he was doing fraud and robbing people and stealing from people, but these people out of their own free will and free volition do those things. And the reason why I'm saying this here, not to defend anybody, but to open up your mind and to remove back the limitations so God can bless you, that you don't feel guilty when it's when the windows of heaven open up and start pouring you out a blessing that folks will come to you and tell me, I don't think you need that kind of car. What you need with that kind of car? Because I want it. And if God can give it to me, I'm going to take it, I'm going to have it, and keep teaching the principles of being blessed. Now, keep this, keep this in mind. When you walk that kind of way, you get closer and closer to God. These things don't happen to just anybody. Trust me. You don't walk in that kind of blessing, live in any kind of way. That kind of blessing don't follow you. So when people are getting blessed, it is because they are walking in the favor and the blessings of God. They have lined themselves up to walk up right before him, and the blessings overtake them. Now, those ones that struggle, we need to figure out why we're struggling. Figure out why you're struggling because you might not be walking under the windows of the blessing instead of for criticizing. And that may be the very reason why we can't get blessed because we're too busy criticizing and we're speaking against the word of God. Giving it shall be given to you. Good measures pressed down, shaking together, running over shall be given to your bosom. If we keep our big mouth shut, and I'm including we, so because I don't because I, I, I don't want to offend anybody with the word. So I'm going to include myself in it so we can all feel like we're all in this one big pot. But I'm I got I got the mindset of saying. I learn what to say and I learn what not to say because God wants all of his people blessed. And so what we should do is say, Lord, you did it for him. The word works. So if the word works and I see it working in their life, I want to see it working in my life. So instead of for me speaking against the word, because really that's what we're doing. We're speaking against the word. I'm going to receive the word and say, I received that for my life as well. And then you watch how God's word start working. When you stop being stingy and you start giving to people, then guess what? It's going to be given back to you, good measures, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. We have to believe that God wants us to be blessed. How do we, how do we understand God's stance toward us as far as uh, being blessed is concerned? Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He says, whatever your expectation is, I'll, exp I'll meet that. So if you just got a little expectation, that's all he's going to give you. But he's saying, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask to think. I can do better than that. I, God said, I can do better than that. If that's what you expected, I'll give it to you. But I can do better than that. I'm going to give you your expected end, but I can do better than that. Raise your level of expectation so God can meet it. And guess what? He's going to do it. He's going to keep his word. Your expectation is here for a one-bedroom house. He says, okay, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see your expectation, and I'm going to raise you. I'm going to see your expectation, but I'm going to raise you because I'm going to do exceeding abundant above all that you can ever ask or think. So the sky is the living. Set your expectations. And you know what? When you set your expectations to receive the blessings of God, it automatically causes you desire to walk with him because you understand you can only walk with God, and that's the only way the blessings are going to be um, manifested in your life. Now, watch this here. The closer you walk with God, the more he starts burning all the sin, the, the dross, and the, 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 sh the shaft out of your life. When you keep walking closer to God, the more he gets the sin out of your life, the more he perfects you, the more he cleanses you, and, and then you become more like him, maturing into the full, the full stature of Christ. You start walking like Christ, thinking like Christ, and you not heaping things to yourself. You're being a blessing. You're being a blessing. You can't bless anybody if you broke, you busted, you disgusted. You can't bring anybody in and teach them the word of God if you barely have room for yourself. Think about that. A 40,000 square room where you can just bring folks that's falling on hard times, a family that's falling on hard times, say, listen, come in here, y'all can stay in here until you get on your feet, save your money, and then 
teach them finances and things like that, and then set them back out, give them the opportunity to get on their, on their feet. But if we're in a position where we can't help ourselves, we can't help anybody to raise your level of expectation and God will meet it. He said he'll give you an expected end, an expected end. Also, Jesus said, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. His good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to want to be blessed so he can meet that expectation. Remember, he'll only meet you at the level of your expectations. Therefore, set your sights high. Your expectation will rise to the level of that sight. Then faith will be released to connect to it, and all three will become one. And guess what? You are operating in belief and faith, and that thing is going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. But you got to believe and sell it today that you're supposed to be blessed and that God wants you to be blessed and that you are going to be blessed. Say that with me. I am going to be blessed. Matter of fact, just say, I am a blessing. I am blessed. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed sitting down. I'm blessed rising up. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed on the job. I'm blessed in my house. My goldfish blessed. My dog blessed. My cat blessed. Even the bugs in my house is blessed. And I'm going to bless them out of him. Amen. Everything I touch is blessed. It prospers. And you walk up with your head held high, your chest stuck out wide, knowing that you serve the true and living God who is El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sent Canoe. He's all those things. He's I am that I am. Everything you need, I am has it for you. And we got to come together on Wednesday night and talk about the kingdom. We got to understand what the kingdom is about and so that you can find out that there is everything you need in the kingdom of God. So please come back Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We're going to get in the word and we're going to let the word do the work as he build us up. So now are we setting this thing? Are, 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 is it subtle with you that you're supposed to be blessed? Is it subtle for you that it's not wrong to be blessed? Is it, has it subtle in your heart and in your mind that God wants you to be blessed so that you can be a blessing? So don't be no longer tossed to and fro. Well, I'm supposed to be in poverty. And the Bible says, be content with whatever state you're in. You better go back and read what Paul said. Paul says, I've abound and I've been abased. He gave you two scenarios. He says, but I've learned to be in whatever state I'm in to be content with. So that didn't mean just because he was abased, he stayed in the basement. Not stay in the basement, but stay in a basement. To stand that they didn't be content with where he was. No, Paul said, I have abound. There have been times I have abound. I've had more than enough. So God wants us to have more than enough. And guess what? He, he can keep you in the more than enough. And the only time you abound is when you make yourself abound by giving it all away. You give it all away because you know, oh, I'm not going to get into that. We'll start talking about the kingdom and I'll move over to the kingdom and I'll get out of time. But you come back Wednesday night, we're going to explain all of that about selling and giving to the poor. I'm telling you, it is powerful. It's not, for the, it's not for the babies. It's not for the selfish people. It's those that desire to be blessed. Now, I just told you about God wants you to be blessed. But remember, if you walk under the, the, the precepts and the laws and the statutes and the obedience of the blessing, you will receive everything that the blessings manifest. But if you don't, cursings will follow you and overtake you. Go back and read Deuteronomy. Now, we understand that God's stance toward us is that he wished above all that we prosper and be in health. It is our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. He wished above all that we prosper and life to the prosper and be in health. And then that he knows the thought that he thinks toward you, thoughts of peace not of evil, to give you an expected end. A God who can do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. All these things speak of a God that says, I am going to give every good and perfect gift to come to you, and I'm going to give it to you, and I don't change my mind when I give it to you. So, remember that. Settle that in your heart. You are supposed to be blessed. Make a declaration and de make a decree. I am blessed. Call those things that be not as though they were. Now, if you are blessed physically, manifested in the flesh, in the natural, and you declare, I am more blessed. I'm mucho blessed. Mucho blessed. So the idea is, I want to be a blessing. So remember, settle that. No more toss to a fro, like I said. Make up your mind. God wants me blessed. Therefore, I'm blessed. And I will be a blessing. Now, I do want to say this here. Just dealing with this, why things don't work. We talk about on the side of the curses, failure. There, there are th three things that I think that 
we do that cause us to get in, uh, to the place where we don't succeed in the things of God. Abuse, neglect, and just downright disobedience. But remember, the closer you walk with God, listen to God's word, and believe what God says. Now hear me? Not just the sin, but also the disbelief. You out there fornicating, committing adultery, lying, gambling, cheating, all those things. That's just the act of sin. But true sin is the disbelief, the unbelief. Because the, but if you believe God, you will come close to him. You will draw nigh to him. You will learn his laws, his precepts, his ways. And guess what? The closer you come to the fire, our God is a consuming fire. He will burn all that mess out of you. And it's something in you a desire to want to walk up right before him because the Bible says it is the goodness of the Lord that leadeth thee to repentance. You would desire to displease him and to serve him, and you would not desire to break his heart, especially if he just blesses you the way he's blessing you. Now, I talked about coming closer to God. I was listening to Clint Brown. He preached a message, and I want you to listen to this here. He said a pilot was flying, and all of a sudden he kept hearing something like it was chewing the wires. And he says, I keep hearing this sound. And so the people over the tower says, let's see, let's, let's see if we can hear it. And then the tower said, you have a rodent in your airplane, and he's chewing on some wires. And if he continue to chew, you all might be in trouble because we don't know what he's chewing and whatever he does. It may destroy some panel. It may destroy some instruments, and the plane will not work right. He says, this is what you need to do. You need to take the plane up as high as you possibly can. And you keep rising until you hear it stop. And so the pilot kept took the plane up and he went high and high. He could still hear the chewing. Kept going high and high, still hear the chewing. Then he got to an altitude to where it just stopped. And he says, now level the plane out for a while. He leveled the plane out for a while. And he said, now, do you still hear it? He says, no, I don't hear it. He says, let's wait a little while longer. Do you hear it now? He says, no, I don't hear it. He says, now descend. And the, when the pilot land, he says, why did you tell me to do that? He says, rodents cannot live at a certain altitude. So I told you to take it up there high so you can kill him and then come down, you'll be safe. See, when you start walking with God, you high, things that are that 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 are that are, are destroying your life, it can't live there. That's why God said, My thoughts are not your thoughts, as high as the heavens are, so is my thoughts, my ways. So when we start elevating ourselves to go where God is and go higher in God, all that stuff can't live up there. It can't live. Sin can't come there. And that, that stuff will start dying off of you. So that's why I admonish you. Get higher with God. Not just go to church. Not just even read your Bible. But desiring to go higher in God, to get closer to God. And I'm telling you, the more you get closer to God, the more you go higher in God, you will see that those things that you do, those things that got a hold on you, drugs, alcohol, women, lust, they will start falling off. And the God will give you, he'll fill your heart with the, his pleasures, his desires to do those things that will please him. And you'll find out you don't have to sit there and wrestle with him. Oh, I wish God would deliver me from this. I wish God would deliver me from this. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. And all of his, his um, tendencies with it are going to go. We want to go higher in God. Now, that may be the thing that's saying, well, Maybe I can't get the blessing because I just can't stop doing wrong. No, you make up your mind to get close to God, and guess what? All of those things will start falling off of you like a rat because things of death can't live in the high altitude of God. And so I want to admonish you, just go as high as you possibly can with God, and he'll, he'll take care of the rest. He said he'll write the tablets of his word on your heart. You won't have to have anybody else teach you how to live for God. And I'm telling you, get, if you belong to a ministry, and you know, most people say, well, I can't leave until the Lord tells me to leave. Well, keep your mouth quiet, because I hear a lot of people there at the church, and they, they keep up more confusion and strife and backbiting, but yet they'll say, the Lord ain't told me to leave yet. Well, the Lord ain't told you to leave yet. Keep your mouth shut. Because now, if you got the story of gospel and keeping up mess in the church, the Lord ain't got nothing to do with it. You need to go and get moved. You need to go on and move. But here's what I want to tell you. Make sure what you're hearing is the words of life, the words of God, that will aspire you to fall into and to mature into the full measure and the stature of Christ. And if all you're hearing is one message, you're going to get destroyed. 
you're not gonna you're not gonna because faith come by hearing and you got to hear something that's gonna uh, aspire you to live right because talking about where you at that's not gonna do it aspire you to live right give you something to look for to give you something to shoot for give you something to come out of into out of into so that's what we want to do we're teaching you the word so first of all you can believe God in Hebrews 11 and 6 Paul said here's how you get rid of all your wavering and doubt you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him settle that I believe he is yeah nobody have a problem with believing he is but we might have a little problem with that him being a rewarder God is a restorer God is a redeemer and most of all he is a rewarder and he wants to reward you for your good deeds. So when you come over there and fall up under the precepts and the laws of the walking and the blessing, he says those blessings will overtake you. Overtake you. And you can live a life of walking the way God wants you to walk. Now hear me. And this is not bragging when I say this. When I made up my mind to fully walk in the word, regardless of what I see, or what I couldn't see, but walking fully in the word, I begin to see things happen. Trying to buy a home, and you believe in God. You may get the house, and you have to get a loan to get the house. That's what I can see. I just can't you know, I hear people talking about getting a house, buying a house debt free. I can't see that. I couldn't see it, so I couldn't get it. I had to buy a house and get a mortgage. What it's called, or you know what a mortgage is? It's called a death grip. So that's all I could see, and God met me at my expectation. Okay, you get the house, you get that note with it. Then your you, 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 your belief saying, "I want to be debt free, pay that mortgage off." That's what you see. That's what you get. God said, "I'll meet you there." Then you raise your level to the place where you say, "Next thing, the next house I buy, the next car I buy, is gonna be paid with cash, debt free." If you set your sight there, your expectation reached there. God said, "I'll meet you." At your level of expectation, your faith will be released there. It'll happen that way. This is all about based upon what we believe. And so if you don't believe that God wants to bless you there and you hadn't settled that, you will never aspire for that. You will never believe for that. And it will never happen for you. I'm trying to get the believer to believe that you can believe your God. And Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to his righteousness. It's a promise that God promised. He believed that God was able to perform it. And guess what? God did exactly what Abraham believed. And he wants to do the same thing for you. Let's pray. I want to encourage you again. Come back Wednesday night. We're going to be talking about the kingdom of God. Mainly dealing with the poor man. I mean, the rich man. And Jesus telling him to sell everything. So it looked like Jesus was telling him to be poor. We're going to address that. And, and, and come back and show you that. You know, you misunderstand the teachings. And everybody that teach that missed it as well. Uh, we're going to show you our, our spiritual principle concerning the kingdom. And what God really meant, what Jesus really meant when he said that. And he wasn't testing the man. He really meant what he said. But we're going to find out the understanding and the enlightenment of what Jesus was, what Jesus told the man. And then we're going to get an understanding. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, as always, to minister your word to your people. I declare that everyone that hear it, O oh God, and believe it will be blessed in Jesus' name. And, Lord, those that are still wrestling with the, pro the prob probability of being blessed, God, let them keep on meditating on this word, meditate on this word, Lord, till it explodes in their inner man, and then they receive it, Lord, and then rise their level of expectation to the place where they know that you are a blesser, that you are a rewarder, and that you will diligent, uh, Lord, reward them as they diligently seek you. And, Lord, give you praise and magnify your name, and that people will see the glory that you place upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone is blessed, God. I declare it, decree that they are a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we say that we're going to come back and do the communion. Now, I know it's a little bit over time, but I want to do full time because some of these messages, we put them on the radio, and we have, we have to have a full um, uh, 58 minutes, and so I wanted to do the whole teaching within 58 minutes. And so we want to take the time now to remember the Lord. He says, as often as you do this, the communion, you do show remembrance of me until I come. Now, we understand what these two things represent, the bread for the body and the blood, the uh, wine for the blood, and that these things are vital for the believer to remind you of the right that you have, the covenant right that you have through Jesus Christ for healing. 
you need to understand this here. A lot of people say Jesus came to save my save me from my sin. That he did. But they don't forget what came first. He was whipped at the whipping post before he went to the cross, which means that he was bruised for your iniquity and the chastisement of his peace was laid upon you and with his stripes you were healed. You were redeemed from sickness even before you were redeemed from sin. You better hear what I'm saying. You were redeemed from sickness before you were redeemed from sin because his stripes came on his back before he went to the cross. And so the thorn on his head came, came at the same time. That you, you, you have the mind of Christ. Now you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind because he has sanctified your, your mind. So we take this body, and Paul said there are a lot of people sick, and the reason they're sick, not because they were doing the things, uh, being evil and doing it, if taking the communion, going and eating the bread, drinking the wine, getting drunk, as if what they were doing was uh, sacrilege. It was the fact that, no, your ignorance is killing you, and the enemy is saying that you don't understand the right that you have, and he's going to take you out. Paul says you got to understand the right that you have through Jesus Christ. So therefore, many of you have died at an early age, a premature death. You shouldn't die a premature death. There are people all over this world dying a premature death. And preachers need to stop lying on God, saying that God plucked up another flower to put in his garden. God did not pluck it up anybody. We have a thief that are coming against people that don't know their covenantal rights, and he's robbing from them. He's killing and stealing and destroying. But if you know your covenantal rights, you will stand your ground, and you will say, no, devil, by his stripes I am healed. And devil, no, you're not going to take me to hell. I have been saved and redeemed from sin. So therefore, you have redeemed from sickness, and you're redeemed from sin. And Jesus said, as often as you do these things, you do show remembrance of me. You do recognize the right that you have until I come back. So we do take the body, the bread which represents his body, which he told Peter, said, Peter, let you eat of this, eat of my flesh, you have no part with me. So we do this here that we show as a sign that we have part with him. And his body was broken and bruised for us. Chastisement of his peace was laid upon his, on, on, on him. And with his stripes we are healed. Father, I thank you for the bread, which represents the body of Christ, which is broken and bruised for us. And Lord, that with his stripes we are healed. So as we take this, oh God, we do remember the promise that we have through Jesus Christ, that healing belongs to us. And not just being healed, God, but walking in divine health. And we receive it, and we remember him, and we remember what he, do, he did. And we say unto the enemy, we have a right to be healed. Therefore, we declare that we are healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In that blood that was shed for the remissions of our sin, he says, often as you drink of this cup, you do show remembrance of me until I come. So therefore, understand, we have a right to, from, uh, from free, for free of destruction from everything because of the blood. The, old, the wise people knew something about the blood. They'll plead the blood. Why? Because they knew that the enemy couldn't touch the blood. The Bible said when you place the blood over the doorpost, the death angels would go over and pass over. This is why we call it the Passover. So when you take of this blood and you show remembrance of Jesus Christ with an anointing that I have a right, death, pass over. Sickness, pass over. Sin, pass over. Keep going because I'm covered in the blood. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and now that we do lift this blood before you and we ask that you bless it and sanctify it, that as we partake of it, we do show forth the right that we have through the blood of Jesus Christ who made an atonement not only for our sins, O oh God, but for the redemption of every sickness and disease and poverty in Jesus' mighty name. So as we drink of it, O oh Lord, we do show remembrance of you until you come and say thank you for the right that we have that you have given us to be free of every sickness and disease and above all sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Father, all those that have partake and showed remembrance of you, they are blessed in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We'll see you this afternoon at Hear and Be Healed. Come believe in God that your prayers will be answered. Miracles, signs, and wonders are what we believe in. And we're asking God to stretch forth his hand from heaven, and we're going to see it happen in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>